Use Newton's method to approximate x, where sine of x equals cosine x. So we know our answer already. It's going to be pi over 4. It's going to give us both square root of 2 over 2. Pi over 4 in radians is roughly 0.7853. Now we're going to use Newton's method. We need a bunch of things. We've got a little laundry list. First thing I'm going to need is Newton's method is about finding, given a function f, how do I find a root for my function f? Newton's method is going to tell us how to approximate the root. So I need a function first. So we want to know where sine of x is equal to cosine x. If I want to get 0 into the picture, I can do that by just pushing cosine to the other side of the equation. And then I'm looking at where is sine of x minus cosine x equal to 0. So I should just call this thing here my f of x. f of x is going to be sine x minus cosine x. With that, f prime of x, the derivative, is going to be cosine x plus sine of x. I have almost everything I need. The only thing left is I need a good guess for my x1. Well, I'm just going to do where sine of x equals cosine x in the first quadrant. So that'll be between 0 and pi halves. Let's draw the pictures. Cosine starts up here and comes down, crosses the axis at pi halves. And then sine is going to go up off of 0 and then come back down, cross the axis at pi. So we see that these are going to cross somewhere between 0 and pi halves. Pi halves is roughly 1 and a half. So a good number to start with in that region is going to be x1 equal to 1. All right, so that's my x1. I have my gadget for getting from x1 to x2, x2 to x3, and so on. It's going to be given by this formula. So let's push ahead and see what happens. I start off with x1 equal to 1. And the rest is going to be a calculator exercise now, because note, we're going to be putting in numbers for sine and cosine that are not multiples of pi. So I'll need a calculator to get numbers out. The thing to be careful with, remember that your calculator needs to be set to radians for this to come out making sense. OK, my x2, 1 minus f of 1 over f prime of 1. We stick them in to our calculator for radians. So this is sine of 1 minus cosine of 1 gives you 0 0.3012. f prime of 1, which is going to be cosine 1 plus sine of 1, gives me 1.3818. So on my first iteration, I get 0 0.7820. And you notice we've already got our answer down to the hundredths place with one shot. I go to my second iteration. We're going to stick in 0 0.7820. So that's going to give me 0 0.7820 minus f of 0 0.7820 over f prime of that. That's going to give me, we evaluate sine minus cosine at this point, sine plus cosine at this point, and we get these numbers. I crunch it down and I get 0.7854. Notice now we've got it down to the thousandths place, and that's good enough for us. We can always check our answer. So I'm just going to stick it back into f. And what should come out should be really close to 0, since we're approximating. OK, we stick in sine of 0.7854, subtract off cosine of 0.7854. And you notice I'm going to have 0 up to 5 decimal places. Once I get to decimal place 6, we start picking up some numbers. So for all intents and purposes in the real world, that's going to be 0. So this is definitely going to be close enough to my root. 